Hey there, John Tush talking about the Hour of Code here at Buckley High School. The purpose of this video is to give you an idea of who, of what it is and what it's going to look like for us and why we're doing it and how we need to, need to ask you for help. So let's get started on this. First of all, let's talk about what Hour of Code is. Hour of Code came about about seven, eight years ago as we saw kids start to drift away from the tech fields and they started to say, oh, it's for someone else, it's for smart kids, it's for... It's not for kids of color, it's for boys. All this mythology started to uh, sprout up. So by 2013, Code.org figured out, no, we need to do a national event on this. So Hour of Code is an hour of fun activities involving coding and computing. It's high tech, we do it in December, it's awesome. And it's the centerpiece of CS Education Week. Why is this important? Well, I, I brought in a couple of quick stats. This one right here kind of blew me away. It's from Brandeis University. And the reason I fell in love with the, not the stats, but with the infographic was how powerful the numbers were. For example, it said that of women going into tech, 45% leave in a year because it's a hostile work environment. Of the students of color who are graduating with bachelor's degrees, 7% of African-American students are going into STEM fields. 6% are going in from the Latinx community. And that's not accounting for intersectionality. So my goodness, we're talking low numbers. Clearly a male dominated field. And then the other thing, as if that wasn't infuriating enough, the wage gap between women and men is about $16,000. So we need to address those problems. And I left an infographic here that I thought was kind of cool that talked about, you know, if you don't think it's in your best interest as a business to do it, fact is, businesses with a diverse workforce are more profitable, they're more effective, they're better growing over time, um, they produce better products, everyone wins when everyone's included. So why are we doing it on when we're doing it? We're doing it in the middle of, just, of Computer Science Education Week, and we're doing it specifically on December 9th, not simply because that's Wednesday and our remote day, but we're doing it because it's Grace Hopper's birthday, Admiral Grace Hopper is a huge figure in the history of computing. She was a PhD in math from Yale, who was a tenured professor at Vassar College when the war broke out, World War II. And she joined a defense contractor and eventually became uh, a, a naval officer and eventually a rear admiral in the Navy. And she is responsible for developing uh, with her team Fortran, one of the first solid computing languages and then eventually she and her team wrote a new language called COBOL, common or business oriented language, which took mathematical symbols that were common at the time and put them into plain language so that computing and programming became accessible not just to people with math degrees, but to people, uh, average people who could speak the language and would then uh, learn how to make a computer program by using plain English. So she's really responsible for that. And we don't have common languages. We don't put people on the moon without Grace Hopper because the NASA took her work from World War II and the computing processes she developed and used them to, if you remember the movie Hidden Figures, the Fortran that those women were writing in that movie was and COBOL was developed by Grace Hopper. So this is she, it's her legacy that put people on the moon, which is why I put her on my computational route, Mount Rushmore. That's where she belongs in the computer world. So is she as big as Bill Gates and, and Steve Jobs? No, she's bigger, much, much bigger. Now, now for the soapbox, what's it gonna look like? And on the day of, well, I'm gonna ask you to please invite me to your seminar um, as a co-teacher. A lot of you have done that already, probably didn't understand why or what I was asking for, plus who reads 500 word memos anymore. So if you could just do that for me, I'd appreciate it because then I can set up the rest. Now, Dr. Mario and I are doing this together, but part of my job is to do the back end of it. So what's happening here is your kids on the day of in their seminar, not in current issues, that's just where I set up the sample. Your kids are going to get a hour of code um, uh, prompt right here. It's gonna be an assignment and they just have to click on the link and I'll put in a link just like this. It'll look probably a lot like this. And when the link comes in, it's gonna take them to the code.org website. They go to the code.org website. If you look in the upper right-hand corner, I'll move my little mouse so you can see the little flashy things move. And the sign in, they go up there and they sign in. When they go to sign in, they're going to get a sign-in screen. When they get their sign-in screen, there's a bunch of options. 
One of them is connect with Google. Please use connect with Google. The reason is I have, will have at that point synced all of the kids' Google classrooms with the code.org site so that they're ready to go in. And when they go in, they will use their school account. You'll see that I have a couple of different accounts, including you'll see a student down here I want to thank. A uh, student, I'll mention her in the meeting, um, but I do want to thank a student who allowed me to use her account to be able to see what a student would see. Um, that's why you get that. So pat her on the back when you see her. Um, in the meantime, use your school account to log in. And what will be waiting for them is an activity. I'm showing you last year's. This year, they will go come out with a shiny new activity. They always drop it at the very last minute. It drops near the end. It may drop as late as over the weekend. I've seen it drop as late as Monday morning. So it will drop next week, and then we'll have this cool new activity to share with everyone. Um, it'll be waiting for them. How will we know if they did it? Well, what will happen is they'll go in to, or I'll be able to go into the back end of code.org, and I'll be able to produce all of these reports for you so you'll know which of your kids did it. What's the other motivation? Um, I initially wrote the wrong numbers in my email and I found out an update yesterday. For every 100 students who participate, the school will be allowed to raffle off two Edisons. What's an Edison? Well, here's an Edison. Designed to bring coding to life for students and help teachers deliver meaningful 21st century education. So that is what a but Ed Edison is, sorry about that. That's what an Edison is. Now, what do I need? I need this, I need you. What I'm showing you right here. I need you to be your awesome selves. Connect with the kids, encourage them to be a part of it. Um, get behind them, talk it up for the days that come. Tell them it's coming. Um, it, fake it if you're not excited about it and tell them you're excited about it anyway. Just please encourage them to be a part of it. Uh, let them know how cool it is to try it out and then do it with them, be beside them. Uh, have fun. I know it's a, it's a remote day, but make yourself available um, during that day. Now, what is the day going to look like? A couple of things to be aware of. One, it's a tinkering process. Yes, there are tutorials. I don't know exactly what the tutorial will look like. There's always a tutorial for them to look at. Uh, so and I'll tell them this is how you make these things happen. But then they get creative choices. Do you want it to look like this or that? And they have lots of choices along the way. So it's a tinkering process. It's not give me the right answer right away. It's going to be trial and error. And so stay with it. Be patient. So that's the second thing. Good things take time. Um, and so I'm asking for you to encourage your kids to show patience and then for you to be patient with, with me and Dr. Mario, although he's done this before. It's my first time. So if there are little bumps along the way, just let me know. We'll do our best to get them fixed. Um, I've personally never organized a hour of code yet never done. So this is my first one. So thanks for your patience and I apologize in advance for the mistakes that I'm going to make. And then on the day of, we will put out a meet link to everyone. It will be a meet link that's commonly available to everyone. And I'm already recruiting student volunteers, uh, some of our better coders, some of our top coders to be available in this breakout room. And I will have a bunch of breakout rooms. Don't send them there right away because we're going to get bombed. But if you get a kid who's in there and they're having a hard time getting connected and it's not working out, Dr. Mario and I will be there to help with getting kids connected with help or helping them with their accounts uh, connections. Dr. Mario and I will focus on Dr. Mario Susapena and I will focus on getting kids connected with the accounts to make sure that they're able to get started and I'll put them in breakout rooms with Dr. Mario to make sure they can get that done. I will also have a dozen, I hope, a half a dozen to a dozen kids in their students who have taken some coding work before, who are really good coders, who can actually help other kids learn how to code. That help will mean more coming from the other kids than it will from a teacher, because it'll teach them, oh, wait, this is something I can do, because look, this other kid who's only a year ahead of me in school was able to do it. And they will also see kids who look like them. So we'll start to debunk that mythology that STEM fields are expressly for white guys because they're not. STEM fields are for everyone, including everyone who's in our classrooms. So those are the things we're looking for on the day of. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, feel free to ask questions. I'm here for you. Um, and thank you in advance.